this is a window upgrade and replacement project. Um, winter's coming on and these are single glaze units and there are various options one of which is a, a, a timber frame with a sheet of glass and this is used as secondary glazing on the inside and this this particular one was probably made 25 years ago something like that um, cut with a hand rip saw and hand planed up but it's worked well and there's a, a foam seal on the inside and you just screw it in place but the problem being there that once it's in place to open the window you have to remove the panel so there's another option now you understand that this is not the right size but you can make a lightweight frame like this that just fits on the outside of the casement it's called a storm window in some, some parts of the world it could be even lighter than this especially for this because it's a relatively small amount of glass about there down to about there and you just paint it up properly screw it in place um, and then you see once that face is clean and this face is clean and you have a bit of a foam seal between the two um, you don't get that much muck between the two so therefore uh, that would do quite admirably so there's those two options or the third option which is what this series of videos is really about is to make new casements to fit the original frames because these original frames are fine there's nothing wrong with them but as you see the casements are about 40 mil deep well if I want to use a 28 mil double glazing unit I'm going to have to make thicker casements so the basic measurements that we require is the width of the casement including the storm piece there that wraps around the frame so that is 406 and top to bottom 826 so and also the rebate in the frame is 25 mil D and something in the region of 14 mil wide but we'll we'll cut these storm rebates uh, for a loose fit in there because it's going to fit some rubber seals on the inside so the main thing is we want to get a 28mm double glazing unit in the new casements and I'll show you a photo of some that I've already done and then we'll get on in the workshop and start talking about the shape of the sections we're going to have to machine Right, here we are on the design stage and uh, just to catch up with where we were uh, to improve the windows we can either put secondary glazing on the inside but then you can't open the windows easily you can put storm windows on each casement which means that you can open the casements quite easily and then you just need to add some form of seal around each casement or you can build some new casements to fit the existing frames uh, add some seals and add as we are going to do now 28 mm uh, double glazing units but you can order them all different sizes and double and triple and whatnot but I figured the the difference between a single pane and double 28 mm units was a huge improvement so we'll just um, zoom in now and we'll start doing some explanation right let's see how we get on with this now I think the first thing to do really is to draw the frame so we don't have to draw it all 
let's try and make this bigger so there's the frame this is the inside and so that's the outside and that's the storm rebate and that is that, sorry that's not the storm rebate and that's the rebate which is 25 by I can't remember was it 14 we'll put 14 anyway so there's the frame so what we need to do now is that's the inside face of the casement and yes that's right and the storm rebate comes along here so the casement comes along here and round here and then up and I think that was 12 mil okay so the next thing we've got to think about is the depth of the rebate for the glazing now what we have is we've got a 28 mil glass double glazing unit and then we're going to have uh, face putties on the outside which will allow 12 mil for and then we have to decide really how much timber we want on the inside between the glass and the inside face well the more timber you use there the fatter the casements the further out from the frame the glass will be so let's go for 20 mil and of course that adds up to a nice neat 60 mil okay so between there and the outer face is 60 mil so and we've got 20 so let's go 20 to there about there so, no that's 25 so go to about there then in and then up so it's quite a long way because 12 and 28 is 40 so therefore that rebate is 40 mil deep and this is 20 mil and we'll bring it out here and then across so that, although it's not very square, you'll let me excuse the drawing because I'm trying to draw over like that so you can see as I'm drawing it. So that's the basic shape of the styles and the top rail. So the bottom rail, it's the same general idea, but the bottom rail is deeper. It's thicker in this dimension let's just do some little lines on this one we've got to decide how wide that is and that really is how much timber we need we're showing on the inside between the frame and the start of the glass the narrower it is the more light comes through but the uh, you know, there comes a point where you're starting to lose strength from the frame itself so I've decided it's fairly arbitrary it's a matter of does it look right are you happy with it is it in um, in scale with the frame and the room um, does it if you want to be truly esoteric does it uh, match Fibonacci's rule of 1.61 to 1 or the golden rule anyway I've decided 55 mil just because I can decide it it seems to work through a bit of trial and error it seems to work and you know, I can get that out of the sections of timber that I've got there's no point going I want 62 mil and having sawn timber at 65 mil thick you'll go well I'll reduce that size a bit so I can get it out of the timber right on a the bottom rail uh, the bottom rail is deeper for strength uh, that's where the water goes so you want it a bit thicker to resist rot and also you've got some of the um, casement furniture attaching to there like the stays and what have you so you want a bit more room so 
that's a style top rail a bottom rail will be identical to that but it will be fatter in this way so this will be further over so we're, a bottom rail will be 70 mil that, that section okay so that's the basic premise of where, we, where we're going with this now then we've got on these casements we've got a horizontal glazing bar halfway up so I'm going to try and draw that in place so of course the glazing bar will be there it will mortise into that face so the rebates will be the same except back to back because you've got two pieces of glass meeting at the glazing bar but as a matter of style I like the glazing bars to be set back from this inner face by a 5, 8, 10 something like that mill so I'm just going to draw it there as an arbitrary place to draw it and then <coughs> just here I'm going to show a cross section of that glazing bar so effectively you've got that shape the thickness of that again is arbitrary so it's down to structural strength and what it looks like but this is 40 mil so you can't afford that to be too thin and the size of this is really dependent upon the step there and the mortise because obviously the mortise and tenon will be based around this shoulder so on these ones you'll probably have a mortise something like that so if you wanted to you could have that as a bare face tenon where the shoulder there is no shoulder and the uh, the the bottom of the the end of the glazing bar is there it's just out to how you feel about it what you want it to look like that's where we're going with these frames the the next couple of videos will be uh, dimensioning timber from the sawn material and then uh, planing face and edge thicknessing and creating the glazing rebate okay now the storm rebate will ignore we won't we won't um, we won't create that I'll just draw roughly the casement nowhere near in scale but that's it when you've made the casements you can add the storm rebate afterwards on the dimension saw and the beauty of that is that you've only got one rebate to think about if you have a piece of timber that is this shape without missing then when you start to mark stuff out you've got more thinking so machine it afterwards that way also as long as you've got your joints all right you can just machine bits out and there's no fussing around with all the, the shoulders etc so what we're going to do is We'll be machining timber, but if you go right back to the start when I started this channel, there's a couple of sawmilling videos, and it's the Western Red Cedar that we milled in those videos that we're going to be using for this project. Now, I can hear some of you going, Western Red Cedar's a bit soft. Well, we're over on the East Coast, and we get about 60 centimeters of rain a year so the red cedar grows relatively slowly and it's a lot denser if you go over to the west coast where they have yards and yards of rain every year it grows a lot faster and your rings a lot further apart so in some ways although our trees grow slower here the timber is a lot better <coughs>